will be recorded. So if you want to rewatch something uh, interesting during this presentation, this is possible. Uh, we will send it uh, to you via email and uh, it will also be posted on our YouTube channel. So there's a possibility to share it with your friends who will not be able to attend today. And uh, today will consist of three parts. Uh, first, uh, uh, Mathieu from uh, Sona Motors, uh, he's the PV director of the company. Uh, we'll tell about, uh, about the company, about uh, the product and uh, some physics behind it. And he went with uh, the, the future of uh, how, how to move on, uh, including uh, us as students. And afterwards, there will be some time for your questions. Uh, you can either uh, put them in the chat box or unmute yourself. Uh, if you put them in the chat box, I will uh, read them out loud for Mathieu so he can uh, answer them. And in the end, uh, we have something interesting uh, for you uh, related to this subject uh, at the TU Delft itself. Um, so, um, yeah, I will, would like to give the, the floor to uh, Mathieu so he can introduce himself uh, as first. And then he can tell uh, about uh, the Sona Motors. Uh, enjoy. Hi everyone, thanks a lot for the introduction and thanks a lot for the invitation. Um, so let's start, let's go. Uh, I will go into the uh, um, presentation already because my introduction is in the presentation also. So let's start. So today I will present you a bit what we are doing at Zono Motors and particularly what we do in uh, Zono Solar and Zono Solar, this is the business unit I'm leading where we created uh, solutions to integrate photovoltaic on vehicles. So myself, uh, briefly, I'm coming from the photovoltaic industry. I worked the last 20 years in developing photovoltaic products in different industry, uh, space industry, photovoltaic industry, uh, even road industry and boat industry, but always creating photovoltaic to be integrated onto this object or vehicles. Um, here you get a small snapshot of my team, uh, not updated because we get in average for the last month, two or three new people per week. So excuse me for that. Today we get like a two times this number of people. But here important to understand is how multidisciplinary is the team uh, in terms of engineering, but also we get people and more and more uh, in terms of uh, marketing, business development, product management, and you will understand why later on. Um, so now we'll jump into the presentation. So I would have a first part, like small introduction, what we do at Zona Motors, and a part on uh, the solar integration itself, what we are doing, what do, what do we call solar integration, what are the advantages of solar integration. Just one more thing, I need to make sure that I'm sharing my sound. Uh, it should be here, no? because if not, you cannot see the video. Hmm. Oh, you will not hear the video. There is a video later on. Okay, so let's go for it. Zono Motors, what we do. As a company, we are creating this vehicle. Company is born in 2016. Today we get 120 people and we are creating a solar electric vehicle with photovoltaic integrated completely into the vehicle why we do that and let's see if the link is working properly you can still see my screen right can someone confirm yeah we can uh, still uh, see your screen perfect what would a day look like and we if should we have some sound of it? or not yeah sound uh, works as well and save okay an old one. it's working for you not for me but that's enough i know the video we wake up every morning and see our generation fight for our planet, for our future. So we listen. And we act. We started from scratch to preserve what we're running out of. The ground we stand on, the air we breathe. We don't want to hear ourselves say, we told you so. We want to take matters into our own hands, achieve goals with our beliefs at the forefront. What is a vision worth, if not for making life livable, enjoyable, unique? For us, every single day, there's a chance to make a change.
Perfect. So let's go back. As you understood, probably our goal is quite ambitious, but we want to create the future of mobility and the future of immobility, creating a new class of vehicles that could bring you to a world without fossil fuels. And a world without fossil fuel, not everyone, uh, for everyone, not just for the people able to pay 100,000 euro for a car. And how we do that and why we do that. Um, we started the company, we identified several problems for um, electromobility. There are mainly three. Normally it's the price. If you look at the price of electric vehicle, even if it's going down in the last month, it's still very high compared to the same range, same quality of vehicle using combustion engine. Range is another problem. Most of the people are afraid above the range of the battery. Even if we look at reality, almost one, two percent of the time, people are doing more than 100 kilometers when using a car. But still, it's an important stress factor. Um, people want to have range even if they will not use it. And then there is a charging infrastructure. Look around, look around you, look in the city. Uh, charging infrastructure is definitely not ready to have everyone using electric vehicle. And this is where we come up with our concept, trying to make an affordable and convenient electric vehicle for the mass market. Uh, the result of this strategy is to develop this vehicle. So a small family vehicle, 255 kilometer range, 21,4 thousand euro without tax, including the battery, but on top with solar integrated, which means 112 kilometer per week of kilometer coming directly from solar energy. Kilometer you don't need to pay for, kilometer you don't need to plug in your car for, which is the average kilometers done per week by a commuter, by people using a car to go commuting in Germany. And that was exactly the goal. At the end, we're talking about saving 20 millions of tons of CO2 because our car will be completely also CO2 offset and then big part of the energy you need to run the car will not come from um, um, thermal plant or coal power plant, but from the sun or for the electricity you get at home. Now let's talk a bit more about the solar integration. Um, this is why I'm here at the end. So this solar integration is very specific. Something very specific is where it all started. Um, it all started with this vehicle, the Xeon. This is the seed, the origin of all this technology. Still, we are not the only one talking about integrating solar on vehicle. If you look at Hyundai or Toyota, you can today buy a Prius or a Sonata with the option of a solar roof. Even Tesla shows a Cybertruck with potentially a photovoltaic module on the roof, on the back hatch. Even if lately they just take that back and say that makes probably no sense on such a big and energy consuming vehicle. Still important to understand this is not a new concept. People are proposing it, but the approach is different. They have developed their vehicle and they want to retrofit with photovoltaic, which limits a lot the option, mainly to the roof. And then they're using glass or system based on glass because this is what you can have on the market. In our case, we wanted to have the full vehicle covered by photovoltaic because this is a big advantage and a big increase of the solar kilometer. But we have developed our technology as a developed the vehicle, which led us to a very innovative process where we actually manufacture the car body panels and the photovoltaic in one. We integrate the solar cells into the polymer matrix during the manufacturing of the body panels. 
then you can understand why Toyota or Hyundai are not doing that because they get already their tooling developed upfront to have metal body panels and they will not change it to offer a sole option that would cost them millions. And this is what makes everything different. We had to develop a new technology at the same time we developed a car and we have hybrided, I would say, different manufacturing process from the automotive industry and photovoltaic industry. At the end, the conclusion, we get a polymer exterior. The car is using full polymer body panels. Everything, absolutely everything on the outside is polymer. They are extremely lightweight. We can do complex geometry. We are not linked to make flat geometry of the solar modules you can see on roof of houses. We completely replace the metal sheet exterior. Production rate is very fast and we use automotive grade materials. But then the advantage of this technology is that we are not only able to use it for all vehicles. We can also use that in different industry because what we developed at the end is a process of manufacturing. It's not a product itself. And this process can be used in different industry. As a result of that, um, that we've made public, I mean, we have a partnership with Azimile to install our technology on a robot taxi. So this vehicle is fully autonomous. It's a small taxi typically for, I would say, um, fair areas or a big company with several buildings where you need this kind of vehicle to move people from one building to the others. And this is a full automated vehicle. Then we develop a full trailer and I will go later on the trailer to explain a bit the advantage of having photovoltaic on the trailer. But on top of that, we get seven LOIs signed for different industry to apply all technology in other vehicles, boats, trains, trailer, trucks, recreational vehicles. Now, bit into um, what is the advantage of having solar on the vehicle? So our technology, I said it, it's super lightweight. It's also very cost effective because of the technology we use from manufacturing and the power density is very high. I mentioned it before, I just used this slide as a reminder. Our technology, and this is the good part of the process we developed, can be used in absolutely every kind of vehicle as opposition to other photovoltaic technology you maybe know, like uh, the flat glass photovoltaic, what you get on roof of the houses. You can imagine this is not something you can have in a passenger car. Uh, flexible photovoltaic, you see it sometimes glued on the roof of a camper or caravan. This is not something you can have on a passenger car. And glass VIPV, this is this curved photovoltaic roof you can have on the Toyota Prius, on the Hyundai Sonata. And this is obviously only applicable to a passenger car and only to the passenger car it has been developed for. So in our case, we have a versatile technology. And I will go now and bit into numbers and what is really the advantage in terms of convenience for the customer. So first, it's to understand, we talk always about photovoltaic, but we have developed the full chain and there is a lot you do not see behind the scene. So we talk always about this part here. This is what people see from the outside. But then there is all component between the photovoltaic and the battery. You get a specific, photovoltaic management system and an onboard charger. And all this system has been optimized to work together to make sure that everything is transforming the minimum amount of light that you get into solar kilometer. It's not a simple retrofit solution, taking component on the market and trying to make something working that could have worked, but not being optimized. And this is why we develop a full complete set of new components. Now let's talk about convenience and this is where it start to be very interesting. On this graph, you get a study for two types of vehicle. The blue line is all vehicle with photovoltaic and the gray line is all vehicle without photovoltaic. And now what you get here is how people are using their vehicle in Germany in a six weeks time frame in average. What does that mean? Here during the week, people go to work. And in average in Germany, people 
do 16 kilometers per day to go to work. Then on a weekend, you can go on the mountain, you can go to the sea, and then you start your week again. But the car without photovoltaic already needs to charge once after one week. Then you get the second week, commuting, nothing on the weekend, commuting again, and so on and so on. Not take the same vehicle with photovoltaic. During the day, this vehicle is in average during the year, producing exactly what you need to go to work to commute. Meaning that virtually you're not touching the battery. You're obviously using it to go and drive to work, but then you're charging it during the day and you compensate. Then on the weekend, you do the same. You go to the mountain. Both vehicles are doing exactly the same journey every day during six weeks. And so on and so on. And the result is, thanks to solar, the same vehicle, in leverage only one, while the overcharge already four times. But you can see it another way. That means that thanks to the solar integration, you can have four times more vehicle on the street for the same charging infrastructure. It's a big potential catalyzer to have more electric vehicle on the street, decreasing the cost of infrastructure and charging station. Second way to see it. Remember, we had a battery 250 kilometer. That means that if you would not have solar on this vehicle, to charge only once every six weeks, you will need a car with a battery with 1,000 kilometer equivalent. 1,000 kilometer equivalent battery, we're talking even of a higher price than the highest or more, most expensive Tesla. We're talking about 100,000 euro vehicle to have this convenience of charging once every six weeks. And now remember, all vehicle, 21,4 thousand euro. And this is a big difference. You increase the convenience, you get to the same convenience of a 100,000 euro vehicle in terms of charging frequency. But on top, you do not pay for most of these kilometers. You get 16 kilometer average per day, more than 5,000 kilometers per year for free, paid at the moment you pay the vehicle. Kilometers you do not need to take from your charging infrastructure at home or kilometers you do not need to pay at the charging station. In terms of aesthetics, um, we did a lot of progress and this is really important. We're talking about vehicle. Aesthetics is as important as every other features of the vehicle. This is where we start, as you can see, not really well integrated. This is where we are now. You get a door fully covered by solar cells and you barely see them. This is exactly the target. Now we'll go to use cases. I talk a lot about this car, this vehicle, but as I said uh, previously, we are also starting to market our technology for other categories of vehicle. This is why you get this nice rendering with other vehicles as a teaser. But now we'll go into the use case. So the use case, I think, for a passenger car is clearly understood. But now let's go for bus. And now let's, consi let's consider a city bus, a regular 12-meter e-bus that we have in Munich. This is not this bus in particular, but this size of bus is the most common bus you have in your city, not only in Munich, in Germany in general. There's a good compromise between size and at the same time, not be too big so you can move it easily in a city. They get a range of 280 kilometers per day, but they usually use more 120 kilometers, all of it. And you get the battery capacity. Now what happens if you put photovoltaic everywhere you can on this bus? 
on the roof, on the sides here on the lower part, on the upper part. What will happen in Munich? And here you get always three numbers. On a cloudy day, you get the generation of kilowatt hour per day for every month of the year. Between three in January to 11 in June on a cloudy day. On a very sunny day, a clear sky, the perfect blue sky, not like today, at least in Munich. I don't know for you, but here, definitely not today. You can have between 12 kilowatt hour to 30 seven, 38, sorry, kilowatt hour per day for free. In average per day along the year, this is a green bar. The green bar is the average. You would have 16 kilowatt hour per day. And now let's go, what does that mean for a bus? Because kilowatt hour, maybe you're not all familiar what means a kilowatt hour. And I can tell you the People buying a bus and using bus, like the city of Munich or every other city, they do not really know neither what it means a kilowatt hour. Let's go for the numbers. 16 kilowatt hour per day is an equivalent of 16 kilometer per day in average from the solar panels. It's more than 10% of the kilometer this kind of bus normally do every day. 10% of energy savings. Yes, you're running electric. You can argue that electricity is not expensive. But expensive or not, this electricity from solar is for free. And this is 10% energy saving. If every vehicle in this world and everyone would reduce 10% energy saving, we would have a very better time to go and achieve the agreement of Paris in terms of CO2 savings. And now look at the peak condition, because yeah, this is the average, but peak condition, 38 kilometer per day. That means more than 30% of the kilometer in summer could be covered by solar. This is a massive energy saving. We're talking about thousands of kilometer you can have for free. And keep in mind that Efficiency of this vehicle is going up as well as efficiency of the solar cells, meaning that these numbers can only increase. You could only increase the number of solar kilometer with this kind of concept because cars or let's say bus in that case will do more kilometer with less energy and solar cell will produce more energy with a meter. And this is why we think it's a perfect platform. And now we'll go to another use case. Look at all this trailer you get on the street. I mean, all this trailer delivering food to your supermarket, um, moving goods from one city to another for one uh, big airport to several distribution centers. We take the same one, we take it in Munich. And we take the most regular one, 13 meter long. We cover everything with photovoltaic. Now you get the same graph, exactly the same graph. Cloudy condition between 12 kilowatt hour per day and 25. Very sunny condition between here, I think we are 35, 34 and 82 kilowatt hour per day. What does that mean? That means a lot of kilometer if you're talking about an electric truck. That's 17 kilometer in average per year for free, knowing that this kind of truck or at least the first electric truck are not aimed to do 100 kilometer per day. The first electric truck you will have on the street are done to what we call the short range. The short range, oh, sorry, did something wrong. Um, the short range is actually these trucks delivering for a big distribution hub to your supermarket, close to your home. They are doing 200 kilometers per day. Top condition, you will basically have a lot more. 
and this is 30,000 kilometers for free. This is basically a lot, a lot of kilometer. But you could say, hey, but e trucks are not here, not yet. True, but trailers are there. And we are still start, we are already starting to cover trailers with photovoltaic. And what do we use this energy for? Well, you probably have seen a lot of trailer with cooling normally on that area of the trailer. Maybe you do not know that this cooling unit get a specific diesel generator just to generate electricity, to power the cooling unit and to keep your food cold as it must be during transport. Well, covering fully with photovoltaic, we can get rid of this diesel engine and this diesel generator that you get is consuming between three and eight liters of diesel per 100 kilometer. We are not talking about a small saving if you count that in Germany, there is several tens of thousands of this trailer every day. And this is also one of the application we start to work with to have the solar trailer to power the cooling units. I'm almost finished. Um, so job offer, if you're interested in my group, we're looking for this position, but I think at the moment at the company level, we get more than 100 positions open from engineers to marketing people um, to communication people. We are a full vertically integrated company. We cover everything from beginning to the end. We rarely use external company for support function. So if you want to have a look, you can click in there. You can look at Zoncom English Carrier. There is a German version also of all of them if you want to. And then I think I'm finished. I will stop sharing my screen just at the moment to see you. And if there is question, I need the slide. I will jump and go to the slides again. Yeah, thank you, Mathieu. That was a very fascinating uh, presentation, especially about the difference uh, with the regular uh, electric vehicles. Um, so if anyone has questions, you can post them in the chat box or you can unmute yourself and um, yeah, we'll try to answer them. Fuel cells in send of battery. Um, why not? Uh, I know it's uh, a, always a complicated topic. It's it's almost like a religion, at least in this industry. Or you are pro fuel cells, or you are pro battery. But it's difficult to be in both sides. Um, with our vehicle, we use batteries because batteries at the moment are at the state of the art needed to make electric vehicle. Fuel cell, hydrogen fuel cells, they are still extremely expensive and you can see, just look at the market. Um, there is a lot of vehicle offering uh, conventional solid state or batteries and not a lot of them using fuel cells and it's just a matter of price at the moment. Uh, for us, even if you integrate fuel cells and hydrogen fuel cells on the vehicle, few people know it, but you still get a battery. Your vehicle is not powered directly by the fuel cells. You get a buffer battery in between, and we could still charge battery with photovoltaic, and then you use it like a hybrid vehicle. So this battery is used normally to start the vehicle because fuel cells are not the best way to deliver a lot of energy very fast. So. Uh, for us, as a strategy for the vehicle, we are not looking at it from a solar point of view, that's transparent. True. Um, this is also suitable. Uh, Actually, when you are suitable for passenger vehicle, you are technically suitable for every vehicle almost, except if you are using glass, like Hyundai or Toyota, because then you get a very specific curvature. 
first point, which is adapted to one vehicle. Second point is the price. Uh, the price for a solar roof from Toyota is 5,000 euro. And from Hyundai, it's very, very difficult to say because you don't have it as an option. You have it in a certain category of vehicles, so the high-end vehicle. So it's somehow diluted with other options. Uh, but uh, these other options, including photovoltaic, cost more than 12,000 euro. Now, just imagine I'm telling you that in your camper, um, I'm proposing you for 5,000 euro a photovoltaic module, which in area and power could cost you 200 euro on eBay or Amazon. Well, you would probably not be very happy uh, in terms of uh, money invested versus uh, what you get for the money. So of price more than technology. Um, can we ask you to repeat the question um, just so that the people watching the recording can hear it? Yeah, Thank sorry, you. I will do that. So for this one, the question was, I will repeat it after still, uh, why uh, are certain PV technologies suitable for passenger cars, but not suitable for campers? So I said, it's mainly a matter of price normally. Um, okay, I myself also got a question. Um, because are you already selling these vehicles or are they still under uh, 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 development? These vehicles are still in development. Uh, we had since a few months ago, uh, the last generation of prototype. In the automotive industry, you get normally three or four generation of prototype before you go to production. So we just finished the second one. Third one will come next year. And the fourth one is normally the first vehicle that you get out of production. So we will start selling the vehicle in around two years from now. Yeah. Uh, you can still make a reservation if you want to, but uh, at the moment you cannot buy it, let's say, uh, directly and have it tomorrow. Okay, thank How you. safe are the PV? Oh, sorry, maybe you had a question or so, Mas. I have one here, so let me know who goes. I uh, Yeah, answer the, the uh, okay. comment. But first. Okay, so the question is how safe are the PV panels when compared to regular metal sheet? Have they been through any crash test? Good point. Uh, yes, if you get a polymer body panel, they are not as stiff as metal, but it's not a problem if you know it from the beginning of the design phase of the vehicle. And let me explain. We will take a door, then if you know that your body panel is not protecting so much from a, a crash test for the passenger, then you can design the frame of the door inside the door, what you do not see to be stiffer, to achieve the same level of protection. So this is exactly the strategy we are using. I get no more question here at the moment. Yeah, there was uh, one more question from Zeno. Uh, um, about um, uh, how to deal with collisions. Isn't it very expensive to replace parts with uh, PV panels? So difficult to compare the price, um, but uh, you will understand the concept. What happens when you get a metal sheet uh, body panels on your vehicle? Normally you get a scratch, I would say a big one or one you want to repair. You go to a workshop, they usually need to remove the paint. Uh, if you are extremely lucky, just locally, but normally once your vehicle is more than one year old, it's not possible anymore because the color of the vehicle is slightly changing with the years due to ultraviolet light outside. So then if you are lucky, you will they will remove the paint for the full door. And if you are really not lucky, they will need to repaint the full vehicle. In, all cases, it takes a lot of time and it's really expensive because of manpower. In our case, we get polymer. So in polymer, the color is in the polymer itself. You cannot paint it. What they will do will be to replace the full body panel. What we have developed is a concept. So you also could order a body panel, a door and change it yourself. 
all the vehicle is very easy to repair and we would have tutorial on video on our website. But if you think about the price and the workshop to go back to the question, that means that we are close to, to what I call the car glass model. You know, you get something, a problem on your windshield. You just call them, you have an appointment tomorrow, you go there, you have a nice coffee and you drive back home. That will be the same model. It's complicated now to say it will cost more or less. Feeling that it will cost a lot less. Just look at your windshield. You don't even pay for it because it's so inexpensive that the insurance is taking the cost normally. But in terms of convenience, it's a lot easier. You will not be two weeks without your vehicle. We're talking about half an hour, you go there, you drive back. So how to give a very clear price? I can give you the concept and then you can make your own opinion. Do you think it will cost more, cost less? It depends also a lot on how you appreciate convenience of having your vehicle fast, uh, ready in half an hour or having it in two weeks. Then I get a question here, if the car is in minor crash, uh, serious impact, what is the total amount output of the solar cells? Um, solar cells are actually connected in a matrix way, which means that if you are, if you get a big crash on Ryan solar cell, you will lose between three and six solar cells, depending how where is your crash? Because you, you, if you look at the vehicle in the roof, there is less crash normally. We have grouped the solar cells in bigger, I would say, uh, lines or independent system. In the door, this is the other way around. So basically, you will lose a small part of the car if you have a crash on one solar cell. You will not lose all the vehicle and all the energy from the solar integration. I get another question here. Do you think at some point you would have a branch in your company dealing with BIPV? So BIPV is building integrated photovoltaic. What we do is called VIPV, vehicle integrated photovoltaic. Uh, I do not think so. Uh, BIPV is a very, very, very different market. BIPV is normally a lot of small volume because when you want to have a nice design of PV integration on the building, it's usually an architect building, meaning every project is different. By your position, if you look at the vehicle industry, not only automotive, you usually get volume, which means that you develop your product for one car or one technology, one trailer, but then you will have thousands of them. It's a different business. At the moment, we are not willing to go into the BIPV business. It's a completely different business, and this is not what we have developed for. Hi, uh, I have a really small question. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, I wanted to know what is the current uh, generation of the PV technology we are using in VIPV? And is there a specific reason for that specific technology that we are uh, currently employing in the structure? Yeah, so most of the people at the moment are using glass photovoltaic, which means that they use a curved glass to integrate the solar cell, which limits the use only to the roof. You cannot have glass on the hood or on the door. On the door, you can easily understand. I mean, you can easily break it, opening the door uh, in a parking place or something. On the hood or bonnet, it's strictly forbidden because of peritoneal protection. When you hit a pattern, normally you hit on the legs and the head is crashing on the hood. And this cannot have glass because then you could have small pieces of glass inside the head of the people, which would not be really nice for them. Um, in terms of solar cells, they use five burst bar solar cells. So it's like very close to the state of the art you see on roof or back contact. In our case, we use back contact solar cells, which is like the best of what you can have. It offer a lot of advantage in terms of process and integration. 
And then we use our polymer technology so we can integrate the solar cells everywhere on the vehicle and not only on the roof. I think okay, we have time get... for one, one more question from uh, Eric in the chat box. And uh, if anyone has any more questions, you can always send us an email or maybe Matthias, you could share, uh, share your uh, contact details that they could. could yeah, if directly. you do not mind, I would prefer that if you could centralize the question and then I can have one email and answer everything okay. directly. Yeah, uh, yeah just okay. uh, I get too many emails per day and I'm afraid I will not answer the question <laughs> if I get several emails with one question per email. Okay, that's perfect. So mail, just mail us and then we will forward it. Yeah, perfect. Um, I get the last question here, Eric. Um, Slide 17, you show that using solar cell can result in average factor of four less charging and how this makes the need for more charging spot lower. And then, however, in the winter months, assume that the solar cell car need to charge more than this charging spot are still necessary. Yes, so in average during the year, thanks to solar, you charge four times less. In winter, two times less and in summer six, six times less. It reduces the need of charging infrastructure if you consider that in a world, I would love to, all vehicle will be covered by photovoltaic, then you would need as a minimum two times less uh, charging infrastructure to have the same number of electric vehicles. So it's a catalyzer to increase the introduction of electric vehicle in the streets, because charging infrastructure is always a limiting factor, actually. And in summer, six times less. But still, these are the rough number. If you look on how people charge, not everyone is charging at the same time everywhere. So you do not need all the charging station at the same time. So tell us that indeed that should decrease by four really all over the year, the need of charging infrastructure. And I think I answered. Yeah, uh, thank you, uh, Mathieu, for this. Uh, uh, interesting uh, presentation. Thank you for, for being here all the way from uh, from Munich. And I would like to have a, a few last words uh, for you uh, from, from us as the Energy Club uh, board. So um, this uh, uh, company is a very good uh, 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 example of where technology, of innovation of technology uh, contributes to society. And at the TU Delft, we have the, the, a pillar called Social Innovation, Energy Transition Pillar, who we'll focus on uh, technical and social innovation and the, uh, inter, how to intertwine this. So their goal is to create new social practices for a low carbon society. And uh, by how to do this, they, they have built a platform that support knowledge exchange and deliberation. Um, so if you're interested in this, you can check out their website. We even put down uh, the QR code here, uh, which you can uh, can just scan and then you can check out the website. Um, so that was it for uh, for for us from for today. And again, I want to thank Mathieu for being here and uh, telling about this interesting company and about the product. And I want to thank you all for attending. And I hope you uh, you learned something and had fun this uh, this lunch. Perfect. Thanks everyone for inviting me. That was a pleasure and would be happy to, to follow up with questions if you get some. Uh, I will send you an email with my contact um, so you can have my email. Yeah, perfect. perfect. A good day, everyone. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. Thank you so day, much. Uh, everybody. And for those people still in the group here, can you please try to fill out this little feedback form we sent in the chat just to know more about this event and what events you might like in the future. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye.